the handshake problem. So what is the handshake problem? If you have a room full of people, how many handshakes are required so that everybody shakes everybody else's hand once and only once? So let's start off by looking at some small groups. So suppose you've got two people in a room, they're going to shake hands. Obviously, there's one handshake there. Person A shakes hands with person B. What about if there are three people in the group? We'll call them A, B and C. Well, A has to shake hands with B and C. B then needs to shake hands with C. That's everybody done. We've needed three handshakes. Now let's extend it to four people. So again, let's start off by thinking about person A. There are three other people for them to shake hands with, B, C and D. Now let's think of person B. Well, he's already shaken hands with person A. So that just leaves C and D for him to shake hands with. Now person C has already shaken hands with A and B. So there's just D left for him. And now D has shaken hands with everybody. So that's that done. It's taken six handshakes for a group of four. But what about larger groups? So suppose we have a group of n people. We're going to do this so we can create a formula for groups of any size. The first person shakes hands with everybody else apart from themselves. So the number of handshakes would be one less than the total number of people n, hence n minus one. When we count for person two, they've already shaken hands with person one and we're not counting themselves. So they've got n minus two people to shake hands with. Person three, we don't need to count their shake with one and shake with person two because we've already counted them. We don't need to count them shaking hands themselves. So they've got n minus three handshakes and so on until we get to person n minus two who's got two handshakes left. The penultimate person's got the one handshake left. And by the time we get to the last person, they've already shaken hands with everybody else. So to get our total number of handshakes, we're going to add all of these together to give us n minus one, add n minus two, add n minus three, so on and so on, until we get to two, add one. So this is the formula we've got so far. It's still a bit faffy. It's great if we had a group of five, six, seven people. By the time we get to groups of 20, 30, 100 people, this is going to take a long time. So let's see if we can make it simpler. If we write out this sum, but in reverse underneath, so all I've done is switch the order around so that it starts with one, two, and it ends with n minus one. Look at what happens if we add the top and bottom together. On the top row, we've got n minus one. If we add the one from below, we end up with n. If we add n minus two and two together, we get n. If we add n minus three and three together, again, we get n and so on all the way through. So if we add these two together, we'll get two times the total on the left and we'll get a whole load of n's added together on the right. Now our list goes from one to n minus one. So obviously there are n minus one numbers there which means we've got n minus one lots of n. So, so far we've got two times the total equals n times n minus one. So the total is just going to be half of that right hand side. So n times by n minus one divided by two. We can use this formula to work out how many handshakes are needed for groups of any size. So using our formula, let's have a look at some numbers of handshakes for different size groups. So we've looked at the first few, two people was one handshake, three people were three handshakes and so on. By the time you get to six people, you need 15 handshakes, not that many. But now let's look at some bigger numbers. If there were 25 people in the group, you need 300 handshakes. 100 people would need 4,950 handshakes. And if you had a room of 1,000 people, 
for everybody to shake hands with everybody else exactly once, that would be 499,500 handshakes, almost half a million there.